Namaskar. My name is Deep Pandey and I welcome all of you to study the technologies. Today we are going to study some uh, digital electronics and under this we will study about a topic called as multiplexer. We can consider this as a first lecture related to digital electronics. Okay. Now what is this multiplexer actually? The function of multiplexer is to pick up the input of any n input lines and feed them to at least one output line. You can see here like this. So these multiplexers are actually capable of handling both analog and digital applications. In analog applications, these are made up of uh, relays and transistor switches. However, in case of digital applications, these are made up of standard logic gates. Okay. Now, about the types of multiplexers. These are the four major types, which consist of uh, two cross one multiplexer, which has one select or control line. And it comes under the IC package IC 74157 and IC 78158. Another one is forced to one multiplexer, which consists of uh, two lines, and it comes under the IC package IC 74352 and 74153. Another one is eight cross one multiplexer. Eight cross one means. It has eight input lines, one output line, and the select lines is number of number of select lines is three. It comes under the IC package IC74152. Then we have 16 cross one multiplexer, which has four select lines, and it comes under the IC package of IC74150. We'll have a look at these ICs as well. If you try to understand about two cross one multiplexer, so this consists of two components, two input lines, D0 and D1, one select input and one enable input, and we have output as Y. So depend on the select input signal, the output is either connected to D1 or D0. If the select line is low, then D0 will be connected, otherwise D1 will be connected. Okay. There is a, something called as enable or strobe line as well. This actually enables or disables all the multiplexers. That is when E is equal to 1, that means it's a high logic outputs of all the multiplexers will be zero irrespective of the value of s that is select line so it is expected that e should be set to zero or logic low value so that the mux or multiplexer can work normally okay so now let me demonstrate how it actually works first of all this is the case scenario. I'm using red arrow as a logic high and green arrow as logic low. So when this enable E is high, in that case the output will always low. So what is expected? That is enable E logic should always be low. That is it should always be set to zero. Now we can simultaneously draw this uh, truth table as well. Okay. So let's see how it actually works. First of all, let's say select input is low. That is select input is zero. Then D1, D0. These are zero, zero actually. The output will be zero. Why? Because being in low logic state, 
D0 is selected over here. Fine. In similar case, again, let's say select uh, line is 0, input D1 is 0, and input D0 is 1. This time, like this, then output will be 1. It simply means that D1 condition, D1 state is a don't care condition. Whether it is 0, whether it is 1, it's not at all going to affect output. In similar case, now this time, select input is high. Let's say high. And D1 is high. D0 is low. In that case, output will be 1. Why? Because it selected the D1 state. So if select is 0, D0 will be connected. If select, is, uh, uh, select line is high, D1 will be selected. The same case you can find here as well. This time D1 and D0 both are high and output will also be high. Why? Because D1 is still high over here. You can see the corner map. This is how it actually looks like. We have state of select line D1 and D0. So this is the case here. This is how uh, it is implemented in the form of a K map. Now this is how the pairing takes place. And we are going to put it into the sum of product format. I'm sure some of you have idea about what is the meaning of uh, sum of product format. Those who do not have any idea about this will have a separate class for the same. So by this uh, Carnot map, you can see this. This is the you know uh, binomial equation that will that is uh, over here. D1 s plus D0 s bar, and this is the logic circuit. It consists of two AND gates, one OR gate, and one NOT gate. Okay, this is how your two cross one multiplexer works here. Now, if you try to understand the multiplexer IC, that is the 74157, you can see here that there are four 2 cross 1 multiplexer within these 16 pin uh, IC. We have a uh, uh, select line as one over here, this one, pin number one. VCC, that is a 5 volt, is to be applied at pin number 16 and ground is to be given at pin number 8. Stove is at pin number 15, which should always be low. And these are the input lines 1A, 1B. The output associated output is 1Y. 2A, 2B associated output is 2Y. Uh, 3A, 3B associated output is 3Y. 4A, 4B associated output is 4Y. Okay. Now, similar case we can try to understand about the 4 cross 1 multiplexer as well. Here also, this enable is uh, continuously low. Okay, and uh, now we are going to uh, demonstrate it to you, how it actually works over here. It's something like, let's say, this is uh, our table table. I'm going to plot it, S1, S0, S0 associated to the output. So, this time, both S1 and S0, these are the select line. These are the lowest status. So, over here, D0 will be connected. Why? The output will be connected to D0. Whatever be the value of D0 will be presented as an output. Whether it is, if it is high, the output Y will be 1. If it is low, output Y will be 0. Similarly, for S as 0, and uh, sorry, S, uh, S1 as 0 and S0 as 1, in that case, D1 will be selected. And you can see in the truth table that the output is D1. Similarly, S1, 0 and S0 to be 0. In this case, D2 will be selected and output will be equal to whatever the data, whatever the state of D2 it is. Similarly, when S1 and S0 both are 1, both are high, in that case, D3 will be connected to the output. Okay, this is how your 4 cross 1 multiplexer function. And 
this is the logical equation d0 s1 bar s0 bar d1 s1 bar s0 d2 s1 s0 bar and d3 s1 s0 and this is the logic circuit which is related to the 4 cross 1 multiplexer. This is the pin configuration of the 4 cross 1 multiplexer here. In this 16 pin IC, this time we have two different 4 cross 1 multiplexers embedded in a single IC chip. Okay. So, being an electronics engineer, it is expected from you that you should have a clear-cut idea of these ICs in your mind or you should have the data sheets of these ICs accordingly to work on the actual system. Okay? The similar case is there with the 8 cross 1 multiplexer. Let us draw the structure actually. I'm uh, not presenting it in this uh, PPT so that uh, I'm just going to show it to you how you can actually draw it or create a truth table for the same. So uh, just give me a second. So now we have uh, 8 cross 1 multiplexer. It means like we can have uh, uh, three different select lines, right? So we have uh, eight different inputs which are supposed to be selected one by one based on the select lines. Okay. So we have um, select lines as S2. We have a select line as S1. And we have a select line S, S0. And their associated output is Y. Okay? Now, it is something like 0, 0, 0. In that case, the value of Y should be D0. We have 0, 0, 1. The output Y should be equal to D1. We have 0, 1, 0. So the output line is D2. We have 0, 1, 1. Output line is, the selected output line is D3. We have 1, 0, 0. The selected output will be D4. 1, 0, 1. D5. One, one, zero. This should be D6. And one, one, one. This should be D7. Okay. So this is the logical table or truth table and uh, based on this we have to design our system. So now let me draw the system for you. We have S1, we have S0. These are the three select lines. Okay. 
and uh, let me draw the wiring system like this like this and like this okay we can connect it to this uh, your uh, not gate as well like this and this is your the wiring system like this okay Now, we have these uh, seven input lines, uh, sorry, eight input lines. You can have these uh, gates actually with us. One, we have to make eight uh, AND gates actually. Two, three, Four, five, okay, six, seven, and this is eight. Okay, these are the eight uh, AND gates actually. So. Now let's uh, draw the connection. So for S2, S1, S0, it should be 0. So we can make it like this. Something like this. Okay, and we can make it to D0. Fine. Let me remove the thickness actually so for that we can have a better view. This time F0 is 1. So we can make it something like this. This way. Then uh, S1 is 0 we can connect to the negative terminal or I mean uh, logic 0 terminal S2 is 0 or something like this then we can have D1 as an input to be selected something like this ok then we have uh, S0 to be Z, uh, logically low like this but this time F1 is logically high, so we can make it something like this. And S2 is logically low, we can make it something this way. And this time it is the D2. Like this. Okay, then we have D3, wherein S1 and S0 are both 1, so we can make it something this way, S1, oh sorry, S0, and this is uh, S1, and S2 is uh, low, so we can connect it to the not setup, we have D3 we connected here similarly for D4 we have S2 as a plus 1 S0 and S1 to be uh, of NOT gate so this one this one 
and this is of S2. You can connect it something like this way and we have D4. D4. Okay. We have D5. S0 is 1. Okay. So it should be connected directly to this direct system. Then S1 is 0. We can connect it to the given NOT gate. Just like this. Then S1, uh, sorry, S2 is again 1. We can connect it to the direct setup. Like this. And we have data as D5. Just like this. Okay. Then let's go to D6. Here in D6, this is connected to S0 first of all. This one. S1 to be 1. Like this. And S2 to be 1. S1 to be 1, right? So we can connect it like this. And S2 to be 1, that means it will be going to this particular setup. And we have setup of D6. Like this. Okay? For D7, all the values are set to be 1. Like this like this and like this and this will be your D7 okay D0 to D7 this is how all the connections will be made here now all these connections are getting into this AND gate and the final collection should go into something or gate. Okay? It has something like just make it something like this way. And this is the final output. Let me wire it. Right, this is an all gate and from this you can get your desired output at Y. So at a time, remember that any one of these D0 to D7 values will be available over here. Right. So this is how you can design your structure, whether it may be 4 cross 1 or 15 cross 1 or whatever kind of a structure you want to design. This is how you are supposed to design it. Okay. Now, let me go back to my presentation. And uh, let's try to understand that what are the various applications of uh, multiplexer. So, the techniques of uh, this multiplication, multiplexing actually, it includes frequency division multiplexing, time division multiplexing, Statistical time division multiplexing, intelligent multiplexing, inverse multiplexing, or wavelength division or dense wavelength division multiplexing, or in short, you can call it WDM or DWDM multiplexing. First of all, let me state about this frequency division multiplexing. 
So, in case of frequency division multiplexing, it is an environment in which the entire frequency band available on the communication link is divided into a smaller individual bands or channels. And each user here is assigned to a different frequency. The signals all travel in parallel over the same communication link, but they are divided by the frequency that is each signal writes on a different portion of frequency spectrum. Frequency, which is an analog parameter, it implies that the type of link you see with FDM is usually an analog facility. The disadvantage of uh, frequency division multiplexing FDM maxes is that they can be difficult to reconfigure in an environment in which there is a great deal of dynamic changes. And in these cases, use of frequency division multiplexing is very expensive. It is expensive also because it requires the additional expertise of frequency engineering and reconfiguration. Given the environment today, we don't make great use of FDM, but it is still used extensively in cable TV and radio networks. In a cable TV, these multiple channels of uh, programming all coexist on the COAX coming into your home. And they are separated based on the frequency band in which they travel. So when you enter the channel number in your setup box or cable ready TV, you are eventually indicating to the network what portion of the frequency band it's traveling on. This is something about your frequency division multiplexing. Similarly, another one is uh, time division multiplexing. So, under this time division multiplexing, a dedicated time slot is provided for each part or point of interface on the system. And each device in a predetermined sequence is allotted a time slot during which it can transit. That time slot would be enable one character of data or eight bits of digitized voice to be placed on the communication link. The allocated time slot have to be framed in order for the individual channels to be separated out. A problem here with the standard time division multiplex is that there is a one-to-one -one correlation between each part and time slot. And there is a tendency to waste bandwidth when vacant slots occur because of the idle stations. However, this type of uh, time division multiplexing is more efficient than a standard frequency division multiplexing because more sub-channels can be derived. So, FDM and TDM can be combined. For an example, you could use FDM to carve out the individual channels and then within each of those channels apply the TDM to carry out multiple conversations on each channel. In fact, this is the way how our global system for mobile GSM works out. Okay. Then we have statistical time division multiplexing. So this was actually introduced to overcome the limitations of uh, standard time division multiplexing in which stations cannot use each other's time slot. So this is statistical time division multiplexing dynamically allocates the time slots among active terminals, which means you can actually have more terminals than you have time slots. So this type of MUX is actually smarter MUX and actually have more memory than other MUXs. So if all these 
time slots are busy, access data goes into the buffer. And if the buffer fills up, the additional access data gets lost. So it's important to think about how much traffic to put through the slot map to ensure that the performance variables are maintained. By dynamically allocating the time slot, you get the most efficient use of bandwidth. Additionally, because these are smarter mapses, they have the additional intelligence in terms of compression and error control features. Because of the dynamic allocation of the time slot, a slot MUX is able to carry out two or five times more traffic than traditional time division MUXs. But remember that as you load the data, load the stat, uh, MUX, the statistical MUX with traffic you run the risk of delays and data loss occurring. The statistical marks are extremely important because they are the basis on which packet switching technologies like your IP, X.25, frame relay are built. The main benefit of slot uh, stat marks is that efficient use of bandwidth which leads to the transmission efficiencies. Then we have intelligent multiplexing. This is generally called as concentrator. Particularly in a telecom world, so rather than being a device used in pairs, it is used in a as a singular device, a line sharing device whose purpose is to concentrate large number of low speed lines to be carried over a high speed line to a further point in the network. Best example for the same is digital loop carrier especially used in telephone network. Then we have inverse multiplexing. This inverse multiplexing does the opposite of what the multiplexers describe so far. Rather than combining lot of low bitrate streams to ride over a high bitrate pipe, an inverse multiplexers break down the high bandwidth signal into a group of smaller data rate signal that can disperse over the range of channels to be carried over a network. A primary application for inverse multiplexers is to support of high bandwidth applications such as video conferencing. Inverse multiplexing allows you to experience a bit of elastic bandwidth. You can allocate existing capacity to a high bandwidth application without having to subscribe to a separate link just for that purpose. Now at last we have uh, WDM or DWDM, Wavelength div uh, Division Multiplexing and Dense Wavelength Division Multiplexing. WDM was especially developed for use with the fiber optics. Before the advent of WDM, we were using only one wavelength of light within each fiber, whereas the visible light spectrum engages a large number of different wavelengths. The WDM takes advantage of the fast fact that multiple colors or frequencies of light can be transmitted simultaneously down a single optical fiber. The data rate that supported by each of the wavelengths depends on the type of light source. One very important point related to the first use of uh, WDM is that unlike with the other type of multiplexing, where the goal is to aggregate smaller channels into one large channel, WDM is mean to furnish separate channel for each service at the full data rate. Increasingly, enterprises are making use of new high capacity switches and routers that are equipped with 2.4 gigabyte per second interface 
So there is a great deal of desire within the user community to be able to plug in to a channel of sufficient size to carry that high bandwidth signal end to end without having to break it down into smaller increments only to build them back out at the destination. The WDM furnishes a separate channel for each service at a full rate. You cannot aggregate a smaller channels into one large channel. Systems that support more than 16 wavelengths are actually referred to as dense wavelength division multiplexing. So guys, this is about usage and uh, explanation of multiplexers. So I believe uh, now you will be able to draw these multiplexers, design these multiplexers using the logic gates and work upon them. Thank you so much. Have a nice time ahead and take a very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.